it many reasons to go to the Aviva on Saturday, but chief among them was the opportunity to watch the Springbok hooker Malcolm Marks and the wonderful number no. 6 Seer Coley C. Marks had single-handedly transformed a 570 humiliation against the All Blacks to a 2,425 one-point loss within 21 days. Coley C is well worth a little homework because his life story is inspirational. So I watched and I watched these two players, growing increasingly despondent until my gaze panned back and focused on Bundyaki. I believe his arrival is a game-changer for Ireland and how we approach the game. For instance, his tackle technique creates so many possibilities. The Springboks took their first line out off the top in a pre-rehearsed move, as they clearly wanted their fatties to truck it up in midfield. It was an ideal situation for the Springboks to impose themselves on the game after just 52 seconds and bully the Irish defence. Enter the 62, 129, KGS tight head Cohen Yostausen as the man to bludgeon any Irish thoughts of dominance. He was initially met by Johnny Sexton before Arky smashed. Tackling comes in many forms, with tempo and technique being set by the ball carrier. I don't know what Osthausen was expecting but when Arky engaged, the Irish centre did so on his terms. Coming forward he planted his feet as he accelerated into the springbok. Clearly Arky 37 kg lighter has a phenomenal core and he wrapped his left arm around the springbok tight head and powered him backwards into a terrible position. Off the 129 kg prop went, less than a minute on the clock. From the resulting scrum Tendai beast Mountawarira couldn't cope with Teak Furlong and conceded a penalty. 30 Ireland Osthausen off injured and Mountawarira in trouble after three minutes. But deeper problems lay ahead for South Africa and that same off the top play revealed all. As Adil Felton Yankees received he immediately swiveled telegraphing towards his fatties. I still don't know what South Africa were expecting but as Osthausen received from a standing start both Mountawarira and Kolisi were inside him offering nothing. This is antithesis to a Joe Schmidt side who will have roles, decoys, lines, offering to carry, selling the defence, etc. The two powerful carriers Mountawarira and Kolisi did nothing to trouble the Irish defence, facilitating an early read on Osthausen and a double smash from Sexton and Arkey. Arky went on to display the full range of his tackling technique, such as when outside centre Jesse Creel put on the gas. Arky tracked him off a split midfield scrum and patiently traded space for time with Andrew Conway outside focused on court and all scars and. As Creel was most vulnerable, Arky simply engaged and dragged him into touch. He has the perfect physique to engage the tackle in a myriad of ways and is never happy simply to put the man down as his post-tackle activity is relentless. This attitude, allied to technique, dragged South Africa into terrible places where their skill set and execution was truly appalling, not least for a team in camp for the past number of months. The modern game comes with it a plethora of statistics and my current obsession is turnovers, but I can't find a stat for an accurate springbok passing behind the receiver's shoulder. Take the one sloppy turnover by Ireland on 3307 and follow South Africa's reaction. Yes it's an active turnover transition, but with a 4 on 2, and the Ireland try line at their mercy they butchered it long before the terrible pass from Colisi and two touch. Contrast that to Ireland's amazing transition. From yet another sloppy springbok turnover on 7934. This time, it was from an attacking springbok scrum that broke down on the second pass. Yes, a top 5 team and they can make two successful passes. They should be fined. A turnover gain deep inside your 22 is worth gold, but the team need to sense the opportunity, it needs to be part of the team's culture. So when Jacob Stockdale gathered inside his 22 his immediate instinct was to attack and dominate the hapless Springbok fullback Andres Kutsi. The subsequent clear routes, precision placements, shot selection and handling were wonderful, but it's worth remembering that earlier Coley C pass into touch. Ireland were in the exact same spot with the exact same intent but South African defenders were all at sea as Andrew Conway landed the perfect pass for Stockdale to finish what he started. Perfection. A further difference between the sides can be seen in Rhys Ruddick's try. Ireland's off-the-top line outplay was markedly different in execution than South Africa's attempt 70 minutes earlier. South African defenders were fixed, transfixed and left floundering at every turn by Irish players running hard lines, passing accurately on the gain line and clearing out the ball carrier when partially exposed. 
and on this very point of how the team performs Devon Toner, Furlong and especially Rob Kearney were exemplary in their selflessness at clearing out to ensure Mark Sayal got almost no opportunity to Jekyll in for the ball. Yes, I went to the Aviva to witness Marks and Coley C. The former was ineffective while the later was worse. I had noted on Friday how controlling the pace was the key to an Irish performance and win. Ireland did that but they did so much more. When Arki Al really find their feet who knows where it will end. Of course all this may be moot as it was so difficult to tell which side was in Green Liam Toland at Yahoo.com.